So we are live. All right. Let's see if it's. Let's just double check on the group and we'll go from there. Sometimes it takes a minute, it seems like. All right. Let's see if it's. I guess oh, that means. Uh, I, think, I think I have to, to put the link to StreamYard in the group. No problem. So how's it going so far? How are your puppies doing? Oh, they're good. I've got to, uh, man, Bill, I, so Venger, man, he's, he's quick. He's easy, but legend is it's time for different approach <laughs> he did, he doesn't pay attention at all so he's he really i'm pretty low value to him i think so he could do without so. me so i'm gonna have to change that and uh today he did okay though but what you currently uh, focus on yeah, so with Vendra, I'm just sharpening up like his positions. And honestly, I'm just now putting cues on his positions just to sit down, yeah. stay, or stand. So he knows the tactile is pretty good. So I'm just putting, you know, cues uh, to the tactiles and then doing it. Also taking him on walks and doing that at the same time to try to proof that. Yeah. And with Ace, I'm proofing her, working on her her stand in motion's pretty weak, so working on that. Um, with Legend, I'm just trying to get him to look at me. <laughs> but he's he's good. It's, you know, I hadn't trained as hard as I should have in the last month or so. I've been saying let a puppy be a puppy, and but that puppy's turning into a monster. So I've got to, got to get a hold of him. Yeah. What about your puppies? Yeah. So I had an accident yesterday with my, with my male. So he was trying to get, so my dogs always play with sticks. They like to, to carry something around. I don't know why. And yeah, uh, yeah. my nine month old puppy there, he, he always tries to grab the stick from my German shepherd. And yeah, yesterday it was his day. And now he has uh, two <laughs> stitches. But oh, yeah. yeah. He showed him who was boss, huh? I've been working yeah. on the unforced force fetch, too, with uh, Benger. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's what I'm Legend also two. focused at the moment. A few people already on. Jacqueline's on. Sven's on. Some other people, but I can't sell Cashy's on. Um... Cash, he's asking a question. So I'll just say while we're waiting, I'll answer his question. No, Cashy. So um, my two puppies, I'm not. I'm just conditioning cues to their uh, to their tactile commands. But my yeah. older puppy, she's she's three plus years old, so she's the one that I'm working on more stable uh, stability skills with. So I might have said that wrong earlier. So I think I posted the wrong the wrong link in the in the episode. So sorry about that. Yeah, but I think uh, we have already seventeen people on. So yeah, yeah. Maybe you wait one more minute and then okay. Then we got to go. Yeah, Cashy, oh. that one's not a pup. <laughs> so. She's actually she actually is doing pretty good. She's except for some tracking stuff, she's ready for her three, I think. But I haven't even done her BH yet, so I'm just kind of when I can do it all, I'll do it all. Just you know. And I'd like her to be a, have a little more heart and soul. So she wasn't trained 
but you know that tracking is 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 uh, is, is, is easy to do on your on your own. I mean, I like yeah. doing tracking because you you don't need anybody else to train right. with. You can do that whenever you have time. You're not relying on a helper right. or somebody else to train with. Right. And uh, yeah, when you start off with uh, the tracking box, so I do that with the tracking box. You yeah. can do a lot of things just on your own. And yeah, I yeah. use that tracking so, box. It's the box with the hole in it. It's not like the one you yeah. have, but it's a yeah. It's it, it's the same. It's the same, same principle. Yeah. Well, let me just. Okay, buddy. Okay. Okay, y'all have to excuse me. I have a three-year-old that's home sick. So, well, he was supposed to be sick. I don't think he's sick. <laughs> All right. Do you think we should start? I think it's time. Yeah, huh? might as well. All right. Go ahead. It's your turn. Yeah, so um, what's up, crew? Thanks for joining us. Again, I'm Mike, and it's Dominic. Um, welcome to On Cue Discussions in Modern Dog Training. So today's, am I going to hold up the right hand? Today, direct first, indirect reward. So what's the difference? What are they? What's the difference? What are the pros and cons of each? We use one over the other. Um, which one gives more help? Which one gives less help? Which one's more conducive to a dog actually learning uh the behavior or being more inventive, I should say. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to cover. Um, we got a couple videos that we'll show when the time's right. And then, so we'll go through that, answer questions, and then we have a couple announcements at the end that'll be kind of fun, fun for yeah. us anyway, hopefully fun for somebody else. But um, all right, Dom? Yeah, I'm just going to start off with, uh, the direct reward system, which a lot of people use. You see that a lot with um, luring. And um, yeah, basically a direct reward is a reward the dog can see. So that means when you lure, for example, you have the food or the ball in your hand. So the dog's looking at, at the ball or at the food and he's following the food. So that would be a direct reward. But... The dog has to want the reward. Otherwise, it's no reward for the dog anyways. But uh, yeah, a direct reward, like I said, is a reward the dog wants and can see. And with this method of training, you create more focus. And it's also a little bit called luring. So why do you create a lot of focus? Because the dog's focused on, yeah, I think the easiest example is luring while you in the, in the healing position. A lot of people that walk like this, the food in the hand, the dog's there, and that's a direct reward. The dog can see it. The dog's with the nose is on, on the food, and you, you walk, and you can show him what he has to do. So it's also a little bit called luring. And, um, yeah, most of the time this will create happy and, let's say, flashy dogs because it's, it's high motivation for the dog when the dog can see what his reward is and um, yeah to give an example like I said in the healing position what a lot of people also do when they walk they put a ball under their arm later when the dog is, is ready for being rewarded with a toy so they put the ball under the arm the dog's looking to the ball and then they just drop the ball or they put it under the arm and they start walking in the healing position and when the dog's looking up to the ball, so this will create muscle memory for the dog later for the healing position. And the dog's looking up to the ball, you just let the ball drop as a reward. And the dog's happy, you're happy. And uh, yeah, that's basically the science behind a direct reward. And what I mentioned also is a direct reward makes a behavior which an indirect reward is different to that. So, Mike, do you want to go over indirect reward? Yeah, so, I, and I would just add, um, when he says focus, he's talking about, it, it. you know, direct reward, the dog is 
not focused on necessarily the behavior, but the, the lure. You know, it's just kind of like a donkey with the, the proverbial donkey with the stick and the carrot hanging down. So um, the dog the dog is really just um, watching uh, the reward. And can, it's to me, luring is more of conditioning a behavior rather than actually training it because it takes a while before a dog is actually thinking about what it's doing before it uh, gains the reward. Um, so, yeah, um, indirect reward. Uh, the behavior leads to the reward. So this is just basically the opposite of direct reward. It's when the dog cannot see uh, the reward. He's, he's focused on what it takes or the behavior that he has to accomplish to, to gain the reward. So uh, this is primarily in um, free shaping, for example, or shaping games, you know, when the dog is just kind of searching or hunting, trying to do, trying to figure out what it is that he needs to do or she needs to do to make the clicker go off or to make the treat and train uh, tone go off, whatever it takes. And so the dog is more, um, uh, this at first doesn't create typically, sometimes you'll see dogs that just kind of, that may be factors there. So the dopamine's high and the dog's really, you know, just kind of full of excitement about the game. But um, sometimes it's not so much. The dog's more focused on the behavior and he's just in the hunt trying to figure out what it's got to do. So it doesn't look so flashy at first, but once a dog figures it out, um, man, it's like letting a, have you seen like at rodeos, whenever they open the chute and let the bull out of the, out of the chute and the bull just goes nuts. So that's how my dog, yeah, both of my dogs are like that, especially, but well, they typically run to, I start my training in one of two areas. So it's first, sometimes I'll put them in the, you know, little, the bite table or bite box, whatever you want to call it in back time. So, but they know that there's reward coming, right? So they can't see the reward, but they know that that's, that's where it all starts. So that's indirect. Um, and then, um, you know, in the Popo, primarily we use click release. So um, what would that be? You know, so if I would say most of the time it would be indirect reward if you're, if you're clicking right, because you're not making any other, you're not giving the dog cues, you know, the dog doesn't see the food. The dog doesn't even know what the reward is. Is it a little bit? Is it a jackpot? Is it a toy? Is it existential food? So you make uh, it kind of like unpredictable. So yeah. The very, dog doesn't yeah, know exactly what is coming. Yep. So uh, um, I think a few examples that we have, um, I don't want to get ahead of the game. So you want to jump right into, into your videos. Uh, yeah. I just want to add something uh, to, to what you just said is in the comparison to the direct reward where the direct reward makes the behavior is in the indirect reward system is the behavior becomes the bridge to get the reward. So that means it's, it's what, what you said. It's when you, when the dog does a sit down or he's shaping and you click. So the behavior is just the bridge to get the click, to get the food or the ball with whatever you want to reward the dog. And uh, like you already mentioned um, in an indirect reward system, the dog cannot see the reward. I mean, he's predicting that there will be a reward. Otherwise, he would not do anything most of the time. And um, yeah, so normally when you work with indirect reward, it creates more concentration because the dog is concentrated on what he has to do to get the reward. And yeah, like you, like you mentioned already, this is mostly used in shaping, shaping games or clicker training because we use a lot of click release. And, um, yeah, that's what I just wanted to add to, to that. Yeah, that's good. So he's got a – Dom's got a couple of videos that we're going to show and go through. And then I see – I just don't want people to get impatient. So I see some good questions and comments popping up, and we'll get to those. Just keep throwing them up there, and we'll, we'll definitely get to them here shortly. Yeah. So. so the first video I wanted to show the, most of the people you – their under group uh, have maybe already seen that it's from Svetlana 
and we have the permission, thank you again, to use the video because I think that's a pretty good example. And we will ask you what you think in what reward system the video will be. So I'm just going to start the video. Hopefully it's not too loud. Yeah. So. So here basically is the training goal is to make the article indication. So you see she's covering the food and when the dogs focused on indication, the article, let's say, she just um, uncovers the food and the dog can get to the food to his reward. So just gonna watch till the end. The dog is just eating. So thank you again for the video that we can use your video. And now the question to you all, what do you think? Is that a direct reward or is it an indirect reward or why is it what you think it is? Sorry. So sometimes those today. lines get so, yeah, the line gets so close sometimes that it's hard to tell. And then it, that, sometimes you really don't know and the dog knows, yeah. you know, but if you could tell what the dog was thinking, then you would know, but it, and a lot of times there's a transition, you know, between direct and indirect that that you don't really – it's hard to tell the exact moment that happens, but the dog kind of yeah. – you know, a light bulb goes off and he realizes what's – you know, what the game's about. So, all right. So, yeah, yeah. I think uh, nobody's answering, but uh, we had also that discussion on the video I posted, um, I think, this week. I did kind of like the same like she did. Um, this is a method that Bart showed me while we were training in gold school. And uh, yeah, it's a good question what it is. Is it direct or indirect? So we have a few answers already. I don't know who that is. All right. Indirect before behavior first, then reward. That would be Pierre. Okay. I think it's indirect because the dog doesn't see it even though he knows. Okay. Then we have somebody, I don't know who that is. Uh, I think it's mixed. Interesting. Then we have my friend. He says it's an indirect reward because dog cannot see the reward. And uh, yeah, based on what you just explained, it would be indirect. So the last comment is I think it's a direct reward. The dog's doing the behavior to get the reward following the cut. So now we have everything. Yeah. Mike, what do you think? Honestly, what do so you think? So it's interesting that the definition is pretty clear, cut and dry, but yet you can still have, you know, many interpretations. And I, I think that it, um, so in this one example, I think it depends on how far along the dog is in the process of like if this is the dog's first day uh, doing this article indication, I would argue that it's a uh, direct reward. But if the dog, if the dog knows indirect. the game already, you know, let's just say we're three or four sessions in or a weekend, I would say yep. indirect. This is one of those examples. I think that it's hard to tell unless you can read the mind of the dog and Hey, you know, who can do that? Bart, Bart probably can, but. <laughs> but I can't. So, so now I'm going to explain you why I think it's an indirect reward. Because the definition of an indirect reward is uh, is a dog, uh, sorry, is a reward the dog wants but cannot see. Yeah. So, what do we have? Is the dog able to see the reward? At first, yes, then it's covered. So now yeah. it turns to be indirect. So I think another good example of this would be, you know, if you're healing, if you use luring to heal and at first the dog sees the food, you know, you got your food cupped in, in your hand. Right. And um, I'll use this little I don't know, just little toy here, um, the, you know, the food, the kibbles in your hand. But then it doesn't take long before you can lure the dog with your hand closed. But the dog still assumes there's food in the hand. Yeah. But, you know, he doesn't he doesn't really know. So because he can't 
see it. And the, I think at that point, him following your hand is the behavior. So it's the behavior that leads to the reward. So it becomes indirect. Same thing with the, um, what you just said with the uh, article indication video. Yeah, so we see it's, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to tell. So I think it's indirect because it's covered. Other people would say, yeah, but the dog knows or has seen the food before, before it's covered. So it must be direct. Yeah, so it's always a, a, a good question. But the most important thing is that you and your dog are always training in the same system. So when you think you train in a direct reward system and your dog is in an indirect reward system, so now there are going to be some, comp uh, some th this might cause some problems. I'm going to just give you a quick example. Um, I mean, it's not really a problem, but uh, you're going to see what I know. Uh, you're going to see what I mean. So Bart gave that example in, in the new silver school we were on uh, two weeks ago. So, for example, you do healing with a ball under your arm. And in the beginning, the dog's looking at the ball and you drop it. So that would be direct reward. And then later, you have your ball under your arm, but the dog's looking at your face because he knows looking to my face gets the ball. So now... You think you train in a direct reward system because you think the dog's looking to the ball, but the dog's looking in your eyes. So he's not looking at the ball. So that would be indirect reward. And when you're indirect reward training in that specific exercise, there's no need to put a ball under your arms. So you can put your lure away because the dog is not looking at the ball. He's simply looking at your face because he's in an indirect reward system. So therefore, you can just put the ball away and you don't need that anymore. And some people just go on the, on the training field like years with the ball under their arm. And sometimes it's, it's, it's not necessary anymore. So always double yeah. check if you and your dog are in the same system, direct or indirect reward. Yeah, I, th I think it's important not to get... Um, Iris just said it's already causing problems in my, in my brain. But I think it's important to... Just remember, if the dog can see it, then it's direct. If the dog cannot see it, it's indirect. And it's easy to try to um, blur those lines, but um, it, it's no different than, you know, if my dog is is healing, right, focused on me, um, pre-MAC, right, and then, but there's a decoy downfield or a helper, and the dog knows in order to, to get to the helper or the decoy, he's got to focus on me. So... The dog knows he's there. The dog knows, you know, the sleeve's not far away. Um, but he also knows that he has to focus on me. He has to look at me to f to be released to the reward. So that's the same thing. You know, if the dog knows the food's in your hand or if the dog knows yeah. the ball's under your arm, if he looks at you, then he's still not looking at the food. You know, he's still not looking at the ball or the reward. So, yeah. Um, so a send away behavior can move from direct to indirect even in one session. Yeah, that's also correct. I mean, yeah. it can happen with, with every with every exercise you have that the dog's switching from direct to indirect yeah. reward. And you got to just um, move your training around that and always have plan A, B, C, D uh, to know the next steps of your training while you're training. So I uh, have a second video. Um, yeah, it's not the best quality and it just was a fun session with my German Shepherd to um, train the object guarding for monitoring. It's just a, I did it just in shaping exercise. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to show you the video and then we will discuss it. Yep. So for, sorry for my sniffing. So basically, the dog has to guard uh, the tire. Inside the tire, there's a clack clack. So the dog knows the position. And he just has to turn in the direction I walk. So what do we see? It's a little bit cut. So this is not the whole video, I think. But no problem. So just to explain you, at the end of the video, while the dog was turning with me, 
Um, maybe we can see it there. No, we can see it. Sorry about that. Yeah, sorry, we have some technical problems. Let me just check again. Yeah, that's what I wanted to show you guys. So at the end of the video, I rewarded the dog with the ball. So just from the video, it's not clear if it's a direct or an indirect reward. So what I did, I had the ball in my hand to turn around so the dog's focused on me or on the ball while he's turning. So what do you think would that be from the definition? I mean, that's, that's pretty easy, but what do you think is that? I think it depends. I think, it, could he see the ball? Was the ball? <laughs> yeah, that's good. Could it, so you the know, ball was just right in front of me. Yeah, definitely direct in. Did I give it away? Was I not supposed to do that? No, just. Yeah. You just, <laughs> you just fucked it up. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> All right. So yeah, one comment says direct. Uh, one comment says is indirect. If he's looking at my face, yeah. If yeah, that's correct. So, what do we see now? It's it's always a fine line between direct and indirect reward. So that's what I wanted to make clear with that video and also with the other videos. So it's not always very clear if you're training indirect or direct reward, but you got to make a plan how you want to train and then just adjust your training, um, watching your dog, how's your dog reacting, is your dog in the same, same system like you, and then adjust your training with that. Right. And what do you want to see out of your dog? Do you want to see like a more of a thinking dog? You know, so a dog that becomes a problem solver is primarily going to be rewarded and, you know, indirect because he's he's actually trying to process what's going on and what's going to lead to the reward rather than just, yeah. you know, following like a, you know, like a, a blind monkey. I've never seen a blind monkey, but. Um. <laughs> so yeah, just you, just you, a you, quick I'm summary. Sorry. Oh, sorry, you good? Yeah, yeah. So I would just make a quick summary of direct versus indirect reward. So a direct reward is when the dog can see and wants the reward you have. This will create more focus because the dog's very focused on the lure you have in your hand or under your arm. Uh, direct reward can also be called luring. And this will make flashy dogs because the dogs are very happy and they, they, when, when they really want the, behavior, the, the reward you have, they get very excited, very happy and very flashy. In comparison to the indirect reward is the indirect reward, the dog can't see the reward, even though he's thinking or he knows that you have a reward in your hand, in your pocket, uh, wherever. So the dog can see the reward. This will create more concentration and is also used or called in, in shaping exercises or click release. And that creates a little bit more stability in the exercises. So at first you th you gotta think of what do you want? Do you do you want more have more happy dogs or do you do want to have more stable dogs? So then I can decide. Okay, today I'm gonna trade direct or indirect. And uh, yeah, it's 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 the same principle that Bart used used in his last video with the ball machine. Uh, we discussed that just just right before we went live. So. Is that direct? Is that an indirect reward? What do you think, Mike? Oops. Yeah, so I think, and I think that, that video is in, the lines are kind of skewed too a little bit because, you know, if he's looking at the ball machine for the, for the, 
the ball, he can't see the ball. So there's an argument can be made there, but, but even like the video where there are two balls drop, one ball drops and goes between, I think it's Jack in the video, right? The ball goes yep. between Jack's legs. And then he's, she clearly saw the ball because, you know, the dog looked at the ball, but then looked right back at the dog trophy and just kept barking. So I think at that point, um, I think the reward was the behavior. And I think somebody mentioned that probably a good thing to mention. So if the reward, if the behavior is the reward, right, then are we back to direct? Um, so there's a good question. Yeah, because you don't need an additional reward when the behavior right. becomes the reward. And that's, right. that's always the goal in every, uh, every behavior, behavior, every exercise we train. So we want the dog, um, or so we want that the behavior actually becomes the reward later. So the dog will always do it on cue with heart and soul. Yeah, and that's right. what it's all about, right? Yep. So we'll go over this some more in an upcoming episode. We'll cover operant conditioning, classical conditioning. And then these will be, uh, you know, kind of two main points in, uh, in op between – one of the main differences between operant and classical conditioning. So it would be, you know, your direct reward system and indirect reward system. So um, – with that, how we're at 30 minutes right now, so I don't keep people forever. But um, anything else? Here we go. Yeah, we have some some questions from uh, from the beginning. So if the dog believes there's a ball in your armpit, so that means on your arm, even though you have faded the ball away, does it still come in definition of direct reward? So in my opinion, no, because like the definition says. Um, direct reward is a reward the dog can see. So therefore, you don't have a ball under your arm, so it becomes an indirect reward. Or your behavior is already the reward, though, so that your healing, I guess it's a healing position, uh, is already the reward. I saw another question here. Is this it? It's a ton. No, that's not it. That may be a good one, though. So, here we go. So, what about a dog who has his reward and still works with his toy in his mouth? So, at this point, the ball is not the reward anymore. If he's still working after he already has what you thought was the ultimate reward, then the behavior has become the reward. So just like we mentioned, that's kind of the ultimate goal for every every behavior is that the behavior becomes the reward. So that's my answer there. I think um, he's in the dog is in in behavior, so he's in reward um, at the same time. Yeah. What would you say? I'm totally the same. I mean, it might, I mean, normally if the dog has the possibility to get. Uh, lower reward so that would be in that case the tuck and then perform the behavior which is already the reward so the behavior is self-rewarding um can be any better for the dog because he has his lower reward the the tuck and then he's also performing the self-rewarding behavior so he has two things in one so that's just also what i think i have another interesting question oh no that's not a question that's just an addition so i'm referring to those dogs which are looking intensely in your armpit in the healing they believe there's a ball even though they can't see it so yeah sometimes it becomes just a muscle memory so when you do a lot of luring with your ball in the armpit um, and the dog's always looking up and gets rewarded for that even uh, so it can be that it becomes just a muscle memory. So the dog knows this is the behavior or that's the command for the behavior. And it's just muscle memory. Or there are people that do this luring just right before the trial. And on the trial, they have the armpit. Uh, they have the ball in the armpit. And just right before they go on the, on the training field, somebody else picks the ball and then they go on the field. So... 
I have seen some people doing that, and I think that's dangerous because once the dog noticed, okay, on trial day there is no ball, um, then it can cause a lot of problems because dogs will get um, very intelligent very fast in trials, and then you will have a big problem when the dog's not really knowing the command and, and just um, relying on the lure you have on your arm. So I think that's pretty dangerous. Yeah. I saw somebody in a trial one time and they had the ball in their, um, in their, uh, they had a ball hidden on them. And, um, you know, and so right after their, right after their routine, um, they put, you know, their leash on the dog and they forgot. It's just brain fart, I guess, but they forgot they were in a trial. And so to reward the dog, they pulled the ball out. And I was like, oh, gosh. <laughs> So, yeah, but I mean, there are a lot of ways to cheat on trials. I've seen people that have like from those, um, I don't know how that's called in English, when you make a, I'll make a fire with those small wooden things. Yeah, yeah. What's that, what's that called in English? Um, I mean, there's several. I, I, don't, I don't know. So uh, the head of the of these things are red, right? Oh, a mat? And you can't Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So you have those in your hand and the dog... Uh, was trained to look at the at the red point in your hand, so they just take one of these in your hand and they just lure with that. So or they put it on your arm. Oh yeah, because that's something you could cheat and nobody will know. So yeah. what you also can do is you just make your when you when you're wearing a hat, like you or um, a cap, use that as a toad. Uh, you just shape that to become a high value reward with jackpots and all that, and then you. Go on the trial, you wear your hat, and every time the dog gets a little bit down in the drive, you just right. Hey, you know, for for me, if it's training, somebody else is going to argue, and I probably shouldn't say this since it's recorded. But if it's training, it's not cheating, right? I mean, if you train for it and you keep it, I'm just saying. I mean, you got to find some ways, yeah, to cheat. So everybody does. You know, that. if you dick stall method for. Um, so I'm reading a question and I'll just throw, I'm skipping one. I'll go back, but I'm going to throw this one up here. Do you guys mind going over direct versus indirect reward when it comes to box work? Once the hope of a reward upon indication has been established, has it now become indirect for the rest of training? So... Just happen to have a box right here. So if the dog, right, is, um, can you see that? Yeah, maybe a little bit higher, but that's good. So if, you know, if you're throwing food in the, in the box, right, for the dog to get and the dog sees it and he, you're kind of conditioning the dog to the box, I mean, that's um, obviously direct. But if the dog's head is in the box, right, even though he knows food's going to come because his head's in the box, He's in behavior and he's doing the behavior because he knows it leads to the reward, but not because he can see the reward. The entire, the whole purpose of the box after the dog is conditioned to it and knows the game is that he can't see. So that definitely becomes indirect reward. I mean, that's what builds. If you want to talk about building dopamine, um, that's the maybe factor. And the maybe factor doesn't come through direct reward. The maybe factor comes through indirect reward. So yeah. if you're trying to build a, a, a dog that's happy just from the, because he's excited because of what he can see, yeah, luring works. But if you're trying to build a dog that's a, you know, a dopamine junkie and he gets happy because of the behavior itself and not because of the reward, then you're going to use indirect reward because indirect gives you the maybe factor, right? You don't know exactly what's coming. You can't see it, but you're thinking about it. And so it's that anticipation that builds uh, the dopamine that really builds overall happiness for the behavior rather than happiness for the reward that comes following the behavior. So did that yeah, make sense? Example. I have also a pretty interesting question here. Or I don't know if that's a question. So do you know any, do you know of any example where we have an indirect reward and classic conditioning happening? 
And what about an example of a direct reward and operant conditioning? So let me go over the first part of the question. An indirect reward and classical conditioning happening. So that's very easy because we have that when the dog is shaping and then we want to, let's, let's say we have box shaping in the positioning box. So the dog goes in the box, does sit down, stand, whatever. And when we like the behavior, we have to name it. So it becomes from operant conditioning to classical conditioning. So for example, the dog goes in the box, he does sit down, I click. So that's in the, uh, sorry, uh, that's operant conditioning. So when the dog is in the positioning box and I say sit while the dog's sitting down and then I click, the command sit becomes classically conditioned and the click release from the box to me to get the reward is indirect reward. So that would be, I mean, that, that happens pretty often. So once yeah. you name a behavior and you reward with click release, that's always classical conditioning with paired with indirect reward. And the second example of a direct reward and operant conditioning. So that is also pretty easy. So let's imagine you want your dog to shape. So you just stand in your small aquarium. You have like a positioning box, a clack, clack, whatever. And you have a ball in your hand. So the dog's knows and he can see the reward when you have a ball in your hand and the dog's doing a shaping behavior he goes in the box and then you drop the ball or give the ball uh, give the dog free to get the ball so that would be operant conditioning because the dog does it by himself and you show him what will be the reward and that will be a direct reward so that is um not so typical but also a possibility you can do or you could do I hope that uh, yeah. my English is explained yeah, that okay. Good. Yeah. So, Tune always gives some pretty interesting questions. Who? Oh, sorry. Oh. oh. No, I'm just reading this one to see. I have to make sure I know the answer before I post it. So. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know what he's saying, but he is, he's an academic, so he always has pretty interesting oh, questions. Okay, I see. Uh, can you speak in the same way about a direct and an indirect correction? So that's a pretty good question. Um, huh. Yeah, I mean... So for example, oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. So I was thinking just... just it, popped just uh, it just popped up in my mind... Um, a direct correction. I have never seen or never heard of a of a of an indirect correction. But let me just explain what pops up in my head. So when you say the dog does a behavior, you reward, um, you tell the command, the dog is disobedient, and then you give a correction on on the flat collar or whatever. That would be, in my understanding, a direct correction. Okay. And um, when you want the dog to shape and the dog today, mm, he doesn't want to, he's not hungry enough. And you say, okay, um, that's enough for today. You just put him away, give him no food for the next <laughs> four hours. That could be an indirect correction because he never saw it coming. <laughs> he he didn't, didn't saw it coming. And uh, this is also an immediate correction because he doesn't have a correction right now at the moment so the hunger will come later so that could be yeah. an indirect correction but i don't know what you guys think well and i think another good example is if um let's just like if let's just say my dog's in the heel position right and he knows i have the stick on the left hand side so he knows that if he gets out of heel position then i can i'll tap him back into position or correct him back into position you know with the stick if he can see the stick, right, that would be, to me, uh, a direct correction. But yet, if my dog knows the position, I have the e-collar on him, and he's out of position a little bit, and I want to sharpen him up, so I correct him with the e-collar, right? I mean, he knew it was there, but if he's conditioned to the collar, he's just not really thinking about it all the time. So that would have been kind of indirect. 
And maybe I'm wrong. That's just what comes to my mind. I've never really thought about direct and indirect correction. It's a good thought, though. It's a good. It's a so good I think what, what we should do is that we put this question up in the group for everybody. So everybody yeah. can uh, write down their opinions because tune that's a very good question. Thank you very much. Um, all right. Um, I think we should just close it for now. All right. Because There's a few more questions. Have... Do we just want to answer them in the group or? Um, uh, I just saw one, but. Yeah, just just we, we go over that one last question and then we're okay. going to have a special um, announcement. Where was it? Do you guys mind going over when it comes to? Oh, I guess we already answered it. So I'm pretty sure we probably missed we a couple questions. So I feel. Um, OK, here we go. Yeah. So having the ball on the field, having the dog doing the behavior healing, then releasing to the toy is direct reward. So, Mike? Um, no, I would say it's indirect reward because the dog's doing the behavior to get to the reward. It's no different if um, there's a you know bowl of food on the other end of the field or a decoy on the other end of the field. So the dog has to leave the leave the reward, pay attention to the behavior in order to get the reward. So... So the behavior is the bridge to get the reward. Correct. So the healing is the bridge to get the ball. All right. All right. One, one last one last thing I want to show, and then we we're gonna <laughs> close that up. We have to first understand when we speak of direct and indirect corrections, whether it's a correction perceived by the dog or administration of correction by handle for example an electric fence would qualify as what pulling on a prong by a handler would be what so let me Good. read that again so it's 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 a pretty good question it is. and i think and i think we really should put that up in the group for an open discussion so everybody can uh, yeah write their opinions on that and yeah because I never heard of that before a direct correction an indirect correction so yeah this is just what I explained is just what what uh, popped up in my mind spontaneously so yeah yeah uh, very good question we put that up in the group for open discussion and uh, we're happy to see your comments on that yeah I think there's going to be um, just kind of like the lines between these two can be kind of blended sometimes I think with that even more so. Yeah. So we'll see. It'll be interesting. All right. I think that's – we probably – there's some more in there. If there is, we'll try to answer them in the group. Um, that way we don't go too long. So – Yeah. Um, all right. You want to start or should I start? Yeah, go ahead. So, yeah, we have a, a special announcement today. I mean, it's not really special, but uh, for us, it's it's uh, very special. And, um, yeah, we just wanted to announce that we will do together and team up for a new gold school um, where, where the dates will be released soon um, by Sophie. So thank you, Sophie, for doing that. And, um, yeah, we have planned a gold school together. We'll team up. And, um, yeah, we just wanted to invite everybody in the group and also outside the group to just get in contact with us. And, uh, yeah. Also, um, I'm looking at Facebook and the video is lagging on there compared to here and it's throwing me off. So, also, we're going to do a seminar um, in... That, well, I guess we'll September. post the dates on that too, or, I mean, well, as soon as this video is over, we'll post it in the in the group. So we're going to be doing a seminar later in the later in the year. So a two day seminar, um, stateside. So you know it'll be fun. So everybody everybody's welcome to you know to come. So and also I think we mentioned giving a, a discount to anybody who's in our group who's in this group, you know, so just because we appreciate everybody chiming in, you know, we all learn from each other and um, that's what makes it, makes it interesting just to get on here and talk is, you know, can get old really quick, but to have other people, you know, 
people in the Nipopo fam and soon to be, I expect all y'all are the soon to be's if you're not already. So, um, you know, makes it fun and it makes it interesting and uh, we're excited about it and we'd love to see some of y'all there. So, yeah. So for the people asking where the school will be, um, it will be in Seymour, Missouri. So, um, yeah, we'll be. I will go flying over to the USA to do the seminar, and then we will do the Gold School together. And um, yeah, just stay tuned for the upcoming um, announcements. Yeah. And yeah, like we mentioned, so, there will be. Iris, uh, where's this? I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm yeah, there will be uh, a discount for people that are in the group because we really appreciate um, the discussions we have with you also in the group. And yeah, we just want to say thank you guys for joining in. Uh, thank you for your comments. Thank you, special thank you for the videos you post. You're awesome. And um, yeah, we can learn from each other. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, Finn said, I like the background, guys. We do too, Sven, appreciate you. <laughs> and also, so Iris said, where will the seminar be? So the seminar will be um, just outside of Little Rock. So it uh there's a schutzen club it's about 30 minutes outside of little rock so it's a really nice field um so pretty good pretty good environment so country sitting so yeah and we will announce that soon or if you have any questions before just uh, send us a direct message and yeah we're happy to help you out all right guys. i think that's it for today right thanks for joining us Thanks for joining in and uh, yeah, everybody has have a good evening or a good afternoon and sorry about the time delay because uh, yeah, we have on Saturday, I think we had a time change in Germany. So the times did not match hundred percent. Sorry about that. It's Germany's fault. Once again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Watch out what you're saying in real life. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>